Welcome to Heritage Church. We're so glad you've joined us for service today as we come together to worship our eternal and personal God. Heritage Church is a body of believers committed to honoring our Father, obeying His Holy Spirit, and loving like Jesus Christ. We are believing for a great move of God in our hearts, our church, and in our community around us. Now, are you ready to worship? Let's stand together as one church and lift up an offering of praise to our God. God, we invite your presence here this morning. Come thou fount of every blessing. Bring your peace. Bring your power. Let's sing this familiar hymn, Come Thou Fount. Praise. 
Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed upon it Mount of God's unchanging love Come on, give Him praise. Lift it up. This is a house of worship This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of
the name of Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus, cause this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus, cause this is a house of miracles. to give up on the brink of a miracle. Has God ever worked a miracle for you? Will you say an amen? Say it again. So if you're waiting on a miracle, you just had a couple hundred people tell you that they've received one. You can have faith that you're going to receive one. How many of you are waiting on a miracle? Raise your hand. Are you waiting on something today? Do you believe that song said again and again, I believe you're working. I believe you're moving. Sometimes that's the hardest thing is to believe. But we serve a God that's so much bigger than us. Don't you agree? He's, he knows all and we can trust him. So I just challenge you to trust him this morning with whatever miracle you're waiting on. You might want to bring that to the altar. The altar is going to be open right now and just give that to God. And let's just continue to, to believe and to worship and to know that God's going to give us that miracle. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today at Heritage Church. If you're a first-time guest, be sure to take your connection card to our visitor center for a free gift. We're so glad you chose to attend Heritage today. Here's a few highlights coming up. Mark your calendar for a congregational meeting tonight at 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. Your bulletin holds some important news about the Easter Kids event and community sports. Also, today is the deadline for ordering an Easter lily in memory of your loved one. Thank you for your participation. Our next baptism service will be on April 3rd at the 11 o'clock service. Please sign up at the Welcome Center and you will be contacted with more information. We look forward to celebrating your baptism with you. Thank you for supporting the ministries of Heritage Church. You can give online at heritagewch.com. You can give at the kiosk in the lobby. You can text the number on screen and you can give by writing a check or giving cash. We pray God will bless you. Let's study God's word together in week two of our new series, Running with the Giants. Thank God for his presence this morning. Can we just give God a praise offering today and just say thank you for being in our presence. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let God know. Amen. 
Oh, what a blessed time of worship today, and I'm so glad uh, to be with you. Uh, I'm glad to be anywhere that's outside of the house. Um, as, as you know, uh, we had surgery this week, and I appreciate your prayers, and uh, I was getting some calls towards the end of the week. Hey, you're going to be okay? You're going to be okay? I'm upright, so that's a start, right? No, but I'm doing great. I'm, I'm uh, bouncing back, and I just uh, believe that's because of the prayers of, of each of you, and thank you for that, and uh, we're ready to we're ready to go. Right, and uh, it's interesting uh, that we're in this series called "Running with the Giants." Uh, maybe, maybe today it's maybe for me walking with the Giants a little bit. Maybe I'm not up to running, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Tell somebody I'm glad you're here today. Would you do that? Just let them know. And while we're doing that, if you're a first-time guest, we want to say welcome. Thank you for being here today. Welcome home. We trust that's the first of many. Uh, here's what I say. Give us six months and you'll be hooked. I promise you. And uh, we're glad you're here. If you're watching online, thank you for joining us today. We have many every week that join us live online. We're so glad you've joined us today. And if you would, just put a, a little uh, thing there in the chat to say hi. But while you're doing that, come on, here it is. Just welcome all our visitors and those online. Let them hear you today. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yes. We'd be lonely without you, just so you know. So today we're continuing the series called Running with the Giants. And if you have your Bibles, you can open to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 1. It's also in your notes if you want to pull those out from your program and, and follow along there. Uh, today we're going to look at Abraham. By the way, this series comes from a book by John Maxwell called Running with the Giants. And we have it available back in the bookstore. Uh, almost sold out last week, so we've ordered some more. So those are available to you at cost. Uh, not, not a money maker, just a way to put that in your hands if you'd like to follow along. But the whole idea uh, of the book is that we are in a race in life. Life is a race. Amen. And uh, we're in a contest of stamina, uh, of endurance, of faith, of understanding. I mean, come on, how many of you know every day we have to trust God for more? Every day we have to lean on God even more. But the good news is we are not alone. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, therefore. Everyone say, therefore. Well, anytime you see the word therefore, there's a reason it's therefore, right? And that's because in chapter 11, we've just read the hall of fame of faith. And the Hebrew writer spent the whole chapter uh, of Hebrews 11 talking about great men and women of God, great men and women of faith. And so he starts chapter 12 by saying, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all of those, in other words, who have gone before us and walked this walk, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so, in, so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked before us. The bad news is life is rough sometimes. Amen? Come on, tell somebody life's rough sometimes. Let's just be honest. The good news is there's others that have gone before us, and they've experienced life, and they've got a lot of great insight to help us. And in this series, we're hearing from that great cloud of witnesses that are in the stands, and they're urging us on. They're cheering us on. They're, they're praying for us, and they're offering wisdom of experience. And all we need to do is listen for their voices and hear their stories, and our modern-day challenges will be Ease, more, more easily met as we as we look at what uh, the advice that they give us. But the problem is, since there's a great throng and and they're all cheering, you can't really hear what they're saying. But if they stepped out of the crowd and walked down in onto the track with us and ran one of the laps with us and gave us some advice, we would be able to hear from them. And the question is, what would they say to us? And today, we're going to look at Abraham. He's going to come down out of the stands. He's going to run a lap with us, and he's going to give us some advice. Before we dive into that, can we just bow our heads one more time? Thank you, God, for this time of, of worship. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for uh, your glory that comes and speaks to our heart. And right now, I pray that you would, you would speak through your servant. Help me to get out of the way. Lord, help it to be your words, not mine. Speak through your word into our hearts, I pray. And we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham is often called the father of faith. Faith is something very interesting. Faith is not something that, that you acquire just by asking for faith. 
Faith is something that you acquire by getting to know someone. It is the ability to trust when you don't understand what God is doing. You say, I I don't understand, but I know He knows what He's doing. And, 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 you know, faith is built through relationship. Trust is built through relationship. I've shared a little bit of the story of when I first met Crystal, and and it was a wonderful day, and and, uh, it changed my life forever. And uh, the moment I saw her, I knew I wanted to meet her, and and, uh, we spent uh, the rest of the evening getting to know one another and and talking, and and, uh, I I just knew I didn't want this to end. So I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but the next morning, uh, uh, she... You know, I slept in the men's dorm. Just so you know, I want to make sure this, this story is very clear. It was at youth camp, and she w- she went to her house, and I went to my dorm. And uh, the next morning, we met for breakfast, and I even did her dishes. I think maybe that's when I sealed the deal. She couldn't believe I did her dishes after. But uh, after we were uh, ready to leave, we exchanged addresses because there was there were no cell phones. You know, there was no texting. You literally had to sit down and write a letter. How many remember those days, huh? How many said those are good old days right there? Uh, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, uh, she gave me her address and, and I gave her my itinerary. I was traveling with the quartet from college and, and uh, so I gave her the different places that we were going to be throughout the summer. And uh, I, I just uh, was so excited to hear from her. But, but I was not really looking for a, a, a relationship, looking to date anyone because I'd just come out of a situation uh, where it wasn't really that great and and uh, the person kind of wasn't that honest. And it, it, I, I'd, I'd kind of like decided I wasn't going to try to look for relationships at this point. And so when the first letter came uh, from Crystal, I, I kind of projected that onto her. I didn't know her from Adam. I I'd only talked to her for that little 24-hour period. But when I read the letter, I just combed over it. And I just looked. I, you know, is she being honest? Is, is this really true? And, and in fact, I would read a little bit to my brother-in-law who was also in the group. I said, does this sound cool? And the problem was I was projecting uh, the relationship I had with the previous girl uh, onto Crystal. And that wasn't fair to her. But I didn't know her. I was just I just didn't want to jump into another situation where it where it was a mess again. And thank God, 35 years later, I made the right choice. Amen. Can I get a good amen on that? But what, listen, at that time, I didn't know her. I didn't know if I could trust her. I didn't know if, if, if she was somebody that I would want to spend time with. But the more I got to know her, the more I knew this is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. And it went from not really knowing her very well, but knowing that I wanted to get to know her to the point where I know anytime we have a discussion, anytime she comes with ideas, even even anytime we're arguing over anything, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that anything she says comes from a heart where she has my best interest at heart. You see, that's what relationship is about. You may disagree and you may have things that, that you argue about or, 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 or you, you know, you, that you don't see the same, but you know when it all comes down to it, there's that relationship of trust. There's that relationship of faith. And so if she says, you know, we should do something, even if I don't understand it, I don't question whether she has my best interest at heart. Does that make sense? And so this morning, if you've ever been in a place where you don't understand God's ways... If you've ever been in a place, you're like, what in the world is God thinking? I'm going to give you your first fill-in. Write this in. If you're taking notes, you can pull that out of your program. Write this down. God always does the right thing. Come on, say that with me, church. God always does the right thing. Come on, everybody in the room, everybody online, say it out loud. Wherever you are, even in your living room, say it out loud. You ready? God always does the right thing. You see, all of us from time to time have those thoughts, don't we? That, you know, it just doesn't seem right. I'm not sure God really knows what he's doing. This seems like it's not happening soon enough. And it's not, it doesn't really make sense. So today I want to talk about how we can increase our faith. And we're going to learn from Abraham's story. We're going to learn from the, the life that he lived here on earth. And hopefully he can pour into us and help us understand how we can increase our faith in God. So we're going to learn basically how to grow in our faith to the point 
where we can claim Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways give Him praise. All your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Our goal is, in our relationship with God, is to come to a place where we say, I'm okay with understanding it later. I'm okay with just trusting God. I'm okay with not getting it right now. That, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay with that. And, and when I was thinking about that, I, I thought of some things uh, that kind of uh, you know, uh, tickle me a little bit, and things, things I don't understand. Maybe you can help me with them. Maybe you understand them. You can explain them to me after church. Uh, one of them is this. If 7-Eleven is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, why are there locks on the door? Have you ever wondered that? What's the point? Have you ever wondered why the word abbreviated is such a long word? Maybe you could help me with that sometime. You know that, you know that black box that they always find after a plane crash? And it always survives. The black box is always there. Have you ever wondered why don't they just make the whole plane out of that same material, huh? It just makes sense to me. This is one, I, the first time I saw this, I said, now, Crystal, this worries me a little bit. Have you ever wondered, have you ever pulled up to an ATM and there was Braille on the buttons? I'm really worried about the drive through ATM with Braille on the buttons. Who's driving up and getting their money out, huh? I don't know. Have you ever wondered why fat chance and slim chance mean the same thing? I don't know. I, I don't get it. If you're in a vehicle going the speed of light, what happens when you turn on the headlights? Can you see in front of you? I don't know. What do you think, Vern? Do you think you can do that? Um, here's one. Why is palindrome spelled, the, why is it not spelled the same way backwards? Huh? Oh, all right. I'm going to give you, uh, are you with me? Come on. Let's, can we laugh a little bit in church, huh? Why, when the alarm clock goes off, does it make a sound? I, I don't get that. All right. One more. Why does your nose run and your feet smell? <laughs> Help me out with that sometime, all right? But on a serious note, Every one of us have had times when God doesn't make sense. Every one of us has had time, wait a minute. There's been times in, in Crystal and I's life when we've made decisions that we just knew God was directing us to make that it seemed like we were the only ones that were okay with it. Our friends and people around us like, you are nuts. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, but at least I'm nuts for God, right? At least I'm crazy for God. And this morning, we're going to look at the story of Abraham and look at his life, and hopefully we can get to a place of having greater faith in God. So the scripture here is, we're going to begin in Genesis chapter 15. We're going to camp out in the book of Genesis. The scripture is in Genesis chapter 15, verses 2 through 6 to begin with. Let me set it up. God had just come to Abram in a vision. By the way, you're going to see that his name is Abram because this is before chapter 17. A couple chapters later, God uh, makes a covenant with Abram, changes his name to Abraham, changes his wife's name from Sarai to Sarah. So don't get confused. It's still the same people, just different names before and after the name change. But the reason God came to Abraham was because he was already discouraged. How many of you have ever been discouraged in your life? Raise your hand, huh? Every one of us from time to time, right? And he had been told that he was going to be the father of many nations, but he was getting old and nothing had happened yet. He's like, man, I'm getting to the point where I'm beyond childbearing years. My wife is beyond childbearing years. This, is, this isn't going to happen. And, 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 and he hasn't had a son yet, so there's really no way that it's going to happen. And God says, listen, don't be afraid. I, I've got a very great reward for you. And I want you to look what Abram says. Oh, sovereign Lord, verse 2, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, he continued, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. Now watch this. God gives Abraham a huge promise that will take a great deal of faith. Abraham was doing his best to grab a hold of this promise. He was doing his best to figure out how now that he doesn't even have a son yet, and it looks like it probably won't happen. There's that word probably. That how is this ever going to happen? So God took him outside and said, look up to the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, because there's so many, right? Then he said to him, 
so shall your offspring be. Here's what I know about God. Many times he brings us a big God, huge, audacious dream that's beyond our understanding. And it's okay sometimes if we're going, wow, how is that going to work? That doesn't make sense. I don't know how this is going to happen. And at this point, Abraham still probably didn't get it. But I love, as we look at his life story, how his faith grows and how his faith builds because his relationship with God grows and his relationship with God builds. That's what it takes. The more you spend time with someone, the more you get to know them. Hello. The more you learn that you can trust them, the more that you trust them. Now, he's finally going to get to the place where he gets it, but he's not there yet. So now that he's lived his life, now that, now that he's lived this story that we're going to look at this morning, he's going to come down out of the stands and he's going to give us some advice because he knows that every one of us have been in a place where God's up to something that we don't get. God said he's going to do something that it doesn't make sense. It seems too big. It seems too strange. So are you ready? If he were to talk to us today, he would probably, first of all, he would say, God always does the right thing. Number one, write this down. Even if it takes a long time. You know, Abraham was like, I was expecting God to give me a child when I was at the normal age for, for kids, for having kids. I had no idea it would take so long. And sometimes God's answer takes a long time. Sometimes he, his promise is there, but the answer is not. And it's in those moments that we have to have faith. It's in those moments that we have to trust him. Uh, but, but here's the thing. We don't like waiting. We just don't like it. We grew up not waiting. In fact, the reason a lot of you didn't raise your hand when I talked about writing letters is because you don't want to wait on a letter. You just want to shoot out a text, right? I'll never forget the day I learned that in Las Vegas, not only is there drive through marriages, that's bad enough, but you literally can go through a drive through and get a divorce. That's terrible. I mean, come on. I'll never forget, we were in a drive through I don't know which kid it was. They were all young. And we were sitting there waiting on our food in a drive through And one of the kids said, Dad. I said, yeah. I said, is this fast food? It's taking a long time. <laughs> Because we're, we're, we're programmed to get everything now. Everything's at our fingertips. Everything, everything's right here. Everything's so easy. So what do we do? We take matters into our own hands, right? We say, well, this is taking too long. God must not be listening. I think, I think I'll fix this. Abraham decided to produce a son through his own maidservant. We'll look at that in just a moment. But do you remember the story of the death of Lazarus? Jesus' friend had passed away and, 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 and they had asked him to come, but in their mind it had taken too long. And, and Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. In other words, you're too late, God. You're too late, Jesus. You showed up too late. And that's what Abraham decided. God, God's too late. He, he's, not full, he's not pulling through. I'm going to have to fix this myself. Now, before we look at that scripture, let me just say this. If you're going to enjoy this relationship that you have with God, you're going to have to get used to being uncomfortable sometimes. In fact, you're going to have to get used to being comfortable with the way God works. You're going to have to say, you know what? It's okay. I'm just going to wait. Because sometimes he takes longer than what we're comfortable with, right? Like, Lord, I want this and I want it now. And then we'll little say, well, he didn't do it, so he must not have answered prayer. No, no, he answered. He just said, wait a minute. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, wait a minute. It's not time yet. And we know that Abraham didn't get what God was saying about the stars because he took matters into his own hands. Do you see it in, in chapter 16, verse 1 and 2? Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. Thus, here comes plan B. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children, so go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. Wow. And can I tell you something? When we get ahead of God, a lot of times we make a mess. 
After that one comes Ishmael. He was the son that was born and the father of the Arab nations. And even today, the lack of patience on Abraham's part is causing wars and conflict. Even today, that whole mess is going on. And it could have been avoided. You see, our timing and God's timing are usually never the same. You get that, right? We expect things based on instant society. Give it to me now. Do it now. A man asked God, what is a million dollars to you? And God said, well, it's like a penny. He said, well, what is a million years like to you? And he said, well, it's like a second in time. And the man said, well, can I have a penny? And God said, just a second. Right? Because we want it, and we want it now. Second Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Underline these three words. He is patient. I'm going to give this to you often. I didn't put it in your notes, but I just want you to write this down. This is, this is my understanding. This is the definition I use for patience. Are you ready? Write this down. Patience is endurance without complaint. It doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean you're excited about it, but you're not going to complain about it. You're going to endure until God comes through. Do you see that? God always does the right thing. Come on, say it with me. God always does the right thing. Number two, even if what he says is absurd. He says, you'll have a baby, but you're going to be about 100 years old. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I get any volunteers here this morning. It says, when I can be 100 years old, I'd like to have some more kids, huh? No, I don't think so. Now, last week we talked about Noah, and we, you know, we learned that they lived to be 800, 900 years old, but this is after that, and now they're living about the same age as us. So this, I mean, no wonder he was wondering, when is this going to happen? I, you know, we're getting past the time. Look what it says in verse 10 of chapter 18. This, by the way, is after in chapter 17 that God made the covenant and, and their names are changed. He says, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. The best we can tell, she was about 89 years old, and, and, and Abraham was about 100 years old. I mean, that's, that's past, right? We're, we can all agree with that. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I'm worn out and my master's old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? I love this next line. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Come on, I want you to take your pen and your Bible or there in your notes, and I want you to write in big letters, capital letters, N-O, no. Nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too great for God. God says, why is she laughing? She, does she think I can't do this? He says, I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Now think about it for a moment. It's almost as if God waited until they were too old to have kids just to show how great he is. <laughs> because here's what I've learned about God. God loves to show off. <laughs> he, he is a huge God, and he wants everybody to know it. And guess what? I serve a huge God, and I want everybody to know it. Amen? Because if I dwindle God down to what I can figure out in my own head, I have made him as small as my brain, and that's a pretty small God. Can I just be honest with you? No amens on that, please. And if you dwindle him down to the size of your brain, it's a pretty small God as well. But God goes beyond what we can understand. And sometimes he purposely uses absurd circumstances just to show how great he is. Romans four nineteen, talking about Abraham, without weakening in his faith, he, Abraham, faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Think of that. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory 
to God. He was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust God with all of your heart. Give God glory, and he will direct your path. Basically, the Apostle Paul summed up Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 right there. Strengthen in your faith and give glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Now, that certainty is going to be very important here in a moment. As God begins to walk uh, uh, Abraham into a deeper faith, that certainty that God never does anything wrong and God always knows what he's doing, that's going to be really important. So for to sum up God's ability, nothing is too hard for God. Come on, tell somebody, nothing's too hard for God. Type it in the chat if you're watching online. Nothing is too hard for God. God, why? Because God always does the right thing. No matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, no matter how early it is, no matter how late it is, God always does the right thing. Number three, write it down, even if we question him. Did you know it's okay to question God? As long as you come to the right conclusions. Because our mind is finite, and we don't always get it. And it's okay to say, God, what does this mean? I don't understand this. Are you sure this is right? Even Jesus said, Father, if there be any other way, let there be. But he came to the right conclusion by finishing that and saying, but not my will, your will be done. There's another part of Abraham's Abraham's story that I think is very key. It's also in Genesis 18. It's when Abraham questioned God's judgment on Sodom. We see it in verse 23. Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Will will not the judge of all the earth do the right thing? In other words, are you really going to wipe them all off the, the, the face of the map again? I mean, you know, God had already proved that he would do that. We talked about that last week with the story of, of Noah. And, and now Abraham is saying, wait a minute, are you, are you really going to do that? In other words, I think you might be doing the wrong thing here, Lord. Are you sure you want to destroy Sodom? And then he begins to bargain with God. He says, tell you what, if I can find 50 people that are righteous, will you spare the city? And God said, yeah, yes, I will. Well, okay, well, how about 45, 45 people? Will you say, yeah, I will. It's a very interesting story. Go back and read it. And he continues to say, 40 people maybe? Yes, 30, 20, 10? God said, yes, I will. Now we know the story. Abraham couldn't even find that many. It was he and his family that made it out. But I think this story shows us that God always does the right thing even if we question it, even if we don't understand it. But we have to be very careful not to take it too far. Also in Proverbs, if you go forward a few chapters to Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Listen carefully. This is why it involves trust. What do you do when you come to an impasse with God? You trust Him. What do you do when you come to a place where you're pretty convinced you're right, but God is disagreeing? God always does the right thing. Yield to God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And don't try to figure it out. Guys, we're the worst at this. We, we just, we're just not happy till we've got it all figured out. Well, if you've got it all figured out, where's the faith in it? Come on, church. If you've got it all figured out, there's no need for faith. And now that you've got it all figured out, God is no bigger than what you can imagine or think. And I'm not interested in serving a God that's as small as me. I'm just going to be honest with you. That would be really boring. It just would be very boring. God always does the right thing. Say that with me. God always does the right thing. Number four, even if we don't understand. Lean not on your own understanding. So here's the last part of the story I want to share with you today, and it's depicted on the picture there on the screen. This was Abraham's greatest test in life. His greatest faith test. Abraham and Sarah finally have a son. They name him Isaac. 
And God says out of the clear blue, I want you to take your son, I want you to take Isaac, and I want you to go up the mountain, and I want you to sacrifice him. I want you to kill him. (laughs) It didn't make any sense. Hello? It didn't make any sense. Right? God said, take your son up to Mount Moriah, the temple uh, 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 in Mount Jerusalem, and and give him as a sacrifice. You might be going, what? God, God... what kind of God would have, have someone kill their own son? And, and what kind of dad would actually say yes? I'll tell you what kind of dad. I'll tell you what kind of dad it is that would say yes to that. It's the kind of father that has a covenant from God and a promise from God that this son, my son, Isaac, is going to help me be the father of many nations. God has promised me that this son will be the one who he will work through to to help me be the father of nations. And so whatever he asks me to do, I know God is going to be the protector of my son. You say, you think you really believe that? I do believe it. Well, Abraham would not have done it either without a promise of God. But do you remember the stars? God had already said, I'm going to bless you in a mighty way through your own son, you and Sarah. He knew that God knew what he was doing. He knew that God was up to something. Because he promised that he would be the father of nations. And this is my only son. Do you see it? I mean, after a series of questioning God, after a series of, of saying, man, that doesn't make sense. I, I'm not sure about that. I, that. That doesn't really equate. Finally, he gets to a point and he says, I'm not going to question you anymore, God. I don't care if it makes sense or not. Whatever you say, I will do. And let me tell you, you may know men and women who have great faith and wonder how in the world can they trust God so greatly. I'm going to tell you something. It didn't happen overnight. It started in the little things where they would trust God and God would do something great. And then they would trust God again and God would do something great. And they would trust God again and God would do something great. And because of that, God continues to move in a mighty way. This isn't in my notes, but I said it in the first service. I'll say it here. I've been talking to my staff. I've been talking to the board. We'll talk some more tonight. I want to tell you something. God is up to something at Heritage Church. But I don't think he's up to something that we can comprehend. I don't think he's up to something that we can make up or think of. I think it's going to be beyond anything. I think it's going to blow our mind. And if that scares you a little bit, here's what I want you to do. We have a wonderful, amazing heritage. If you look back at the mighty things that God has done up to this point uh, through Heritage Church, you will see that God's hand has been in it in a mighty, mighty way. And he's not done yet. The Imperials used to sing a song. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't teach us to swim to let us drown. He didn't build his home in us to move away. He didn't lift us up to let us down. God is on the move. And because you are so committed to touching lives through uh, uh, Rose Avenue Community Center and touching lives through missions and touching lives and feeding and helping and saving and people coming to Christ and people being baptized, as long as we continue to do that, God says, I'm going to make this something great in Jesus' name. And my prayer is that it is so big that no one will ever question that it absolutely was not Pastor Phil. Because the more you get to know me, the more you get to know I'm just not that good. But the more you get to know God, the more you're going to know He's far better than we ever dreamed. Come on, church. And I believe that with all of my heart. Going back to Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of fame of faith. By faith, Abraham, verse 17, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Think of it for a moment. He literally went up the mountain with his son, with no lamb, no sacrifice. I can imagine Isaac say, hey, dad, aren't we missing something here? I say, I see the knife. You know, I see maybe they were carrying some rocks. Maybe they got the rocks when they got up there, whatever. Something's missing. It's all right, Isaac. God's got this. They build the altar. 
Isaac said, okay, what now? Crawl up there, bud. By the way, I love you. And God loves you. But dad, me? When God tested him, it says, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Even though God said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Watch this. Abraham reasoned that even if I do kill him, God's going to raise him from the dead because he knows what he's doing. Wow. How in the world? I mean, have you ever read that story? Said, How can a dad do that? Because the more you know God, the more you trust Him. The more you see Him move, the more you know He will move. Wow. Psalmist said in 9.10, Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. You see, I... I believe Abraham is he's encouraging us, he's, he's begging us to give up the quest to understand everything. To have to figure everything out. To overanalyze everything. To have all of our questions answered. Because if you insist on, on God only doing the things you can understand, what have I done? I've reduced God to the size of what I can understand. I brought him down to the size of my brain. And here's what I want you to know this morning. God knows best. And sometimes he's saying, you don't, you don't want me to answer that prayer. You, you're praying that, but you don't want me to pray that. I know of someone that prayed for 40 days and fasted for 40 days praying for an answer. A specific request. Begging God, you've got to do this. For 40 days, no food. Fasted for 40 days. And God didn't answer their prayer. Now, if you were to ask them, what do you think about that time? The opposite happened of what they were praying for. And it is such a blessing that I promise you they would say, I am so glad that God didn't at do what I asked him to do. Now, I'm being vague to protect the innocent. But I want you to know, sometimes you don't want God answering that prayer. Sometimes what happens is he waits because it's best for us and it's best for him and it's best for the person we're praying for. Come on. He says, I've got you covered. You just got to trust me. I hear you. You've just got to wait. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, this is out of the Living Bible. This plan of mine is not what you would work out. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours, says God. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Aren't you glad for that? Come on, tell somebody, I'm glad God's bigger than you. <laughs> I think it was last week I told you about the pastor that said almost every week, let go and let God. There was something else that he said, not every week, but it stuck with me just the same. He would say this, God is God and I'm not, thank God. <laughs> How many of you have had a time in your life where you're like, boy, I'm glad I, I'm not God. I'd have messed that one up. All right, look to the other person beside you and say, I'm glad you're not God, and I'm glad I'm not God. <laughs> right? Some of you meant that a little too much. So let me give you Abraham's final words of encouragement. The first thing I think he would say to us as he's running that lap and we're rounding to the close and he's going to go back up into the stands. 
is don't make this place your home. I had to watch online. I was recovering from surgery this week, but uh, Bobby played that song uh, that says, this world is not my home. What's, what's the name of that? It just left me. I just had a senior moment. Where I belong. Guess what? Where I belong is not here. I feel like a fish out of water because this isn't my, my home is in heaven. That's, that's where God created us to be. No wonder we get confused. No wonder we have difficult days. No wonder sometimes we get frustrated. Obviously we're going to be because we are heavenly minded living on earth. Hebrews 11 again, by faith, Abraham made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking, watch this, he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Wow. He was looking ahead. He was looking forward. And that takes us to the second one. Live with an eternal perspective. Don't look over. Don't look down. Look up. Again, in Hebrews 11. And so from this one man, and he was as good as dead, came descendants. I want you to understand something here. This was, this was after he was gone. This was after he had passed away. It's kind of sad that, you know, he didn't get to see all that, but he had an eternal perspective. And now he's in the stands as one of the great cloud of witnesses. And he's watching what God's doing. It says, as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands in the seashore. And then if we skip forward to 12, verse 13. It says, not just Abraham. It wasn't just Abraham, but all of these people that we've talked about, all of these great men and women of faith were still living by faith when they died. When they died, they were still believing that God was going to do great things. They did not receive the things that were promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on this earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, watch this, they were longing for a better country. <laughs> a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared a city for you. He has prepared a city for you. I want you to claim that this morning as your own. I've asked the team to come back and we're going to sing that song again. This is a house of miracles. And here's what I want to do for the closing. I've just, I just prayed about how to close out today. I, I'm just going to ask you to do one of two things. You just build an altar where you're at and just think about for a moment you're right here in the room alone with God. That you believe God is an amazing God and you're just going to, Lord, show me your way. Help me to trust you. I'm going to open the altar again if you'd just like to come forward and kneel at the altar and just take a step more. But most importantly, can we just claim this as our promise for 2022? That Heritage Church is a house of worship. Heritage Church is a place of miracles. And I'm going to trust God for great 
miracles. So would you stand and team, would you lead us and let's worship together in that today. just give this to you right now this is a house of worship this is our prayer to you lord this is a place of praise where every demon trembles where we proclaim your name this is a house of healing our hearts are full of faith you have our full attention you have the final say so come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Come on, claim it this morning. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. And your kingdom triumphs over. Even the coldest grave. So come on.
In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We declare it. We come alive. Come alive. Father, this morning, we pray that you would give us the courage to trust you, even when we don't understand, to trust you, even when it doesn't make sense, to trust you when it seems like you're not hearing our prayers, to trust you when it seems too slow or too fast, to trust you when we're overwhelmed, to trust you when we're burdened, to trust you when we're discouraged. God, we're going to trust you. No matter what the circumstances, God, we're going to trust in you. And we're not going to try to figure it out and understand it. And, and we're, not going to, we're not going to wait until we understand everything, until we believe in you, until we trust in you. Right now, God, we place our lives in the hollow of your hand. You are our rock. You are our shield. You are my fortress. God, I believe in you. I believe in you. And I trust in you right now. Father, I pray that in those moments when I'm tempted to pull back because I don't understand it, I pray that I would let go and give you glory and acknowledge you that you are the God of the universe, that you never do anything wrong, that you are always right that you know what you're doing and I'm just going to place my life there and give you praise and give you glory and give you honor. Lord, I pray that Heritage Church would never take any credit for anything that you ever do. I pray that Pastor Phil would never take any credit for anything that you've done. Lord, it is all you. It's all about you, Lord. So we just give you the praise. We acknowledge you. We give you the honor. You're the one that deserves it all. Father, right now, we pray that you would direct our paths, make our path straight, give us wisdom, give us understanding of when to stop and when to go, when to turn left, when to turn right, when to stand still, when to move, when to talk, when to not talk, where to go, where to not go. God, give us wisdom, give us understanding, show us your way. Oh God, we know you know what you're doing, so help us to trust in that and not have to understand, but just say, you go God and we'll follow. And we're gonna make that our prayer, not just this morning, not just this week, we're going to make that our prayer in the year of 2022. We're going to make that our prayer for the rest of our life. Direct our paths. Show us your ways. We will follow because you are faithful and we trust you in Jesus' name. Come on, if you claim that this morning, say amen. Come on, say it a little bit louder. Come on, say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give somebody a high five and say, God's got this. Come on, say it. God's got this. Amen. You can be seated. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I showed up to church. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Some of them were texting me towards the end of the week. You're going to be okay. You're going to be there. And I said, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> because I know God's doing some great things and mighty things. And I can't wait to see what all that is. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to come at this time. And as they're coming, let, let me ask you a favor. In, in the program, in the bulletin, there's, there's some cards called connection cards. Would you grab a hold of those? 
And uh, bef- don't, don't start receiving the offering yet, guys. Because there's a couple things I'd like you to do. I mentioned this last week. I want to mention it again. If you have received Christ in the last several months since, since I came as your pastor, maybe you've already done it before. Would you do it again? Would you, there's a place on there where you can check, I received Christ. And you can either put today or, or in the past or just, just so we know it's recently you've accepted Christ. I would love to have that communication from you. And, and then also next week, I know this is short notice. But there are some that needed to do it quickly because they'll be uh, moving. And so we said absolutely. And so next week, we're going to have baptism at the end of second service. And we already have seven people signed up. How cool is that? Come on. Give God a praise for that right now. huh? Amen. And so if you're interested, if God's been, been prodding you, maybe during growth track, you felt a sense that maybe you should be baptized or maybe during the services or recently you've been thinking, you know, I, I think I should do that. Would you Would you also signify that on the connection card and uh, place that in the offering? There's also a sign-up sheet. I'm going to ask you to do both just so we don't miss it because we want to make sure that everybody that wants to be baptized will, will be ready for you, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll contact you and let you know what to wear and all that. But that, that's how we do that. So sign up in the lobby for baptism next week. Sign your connection card, and uh, we'll just we'll just see God do great things next week. Next week's going to be a great week, and uh, I'm excited about it. Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we're just we're amazed every day at what you do in our life. You're you're just such an amazing God. Your blessings are beyond what we can fathom. And Lord, I know it's just the beginning. I know as we trust you more, you will do more and lead us into greater places. Lord, I pray that this offering would be used for your glory, whether someone's giving online or someone's giving here in the room. I pray that you would just anoint them, bless them for their generosity. I pray, Lord, that whatever's given would be used for the kingdom of glory, for the kingdom of heaven, bringing people into the family of God. And we will give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As they're receiving the offering, I just want to give you a quick reminder. I know uh, Daniel said it in the video, but uh, tonight we're having a a brief congregational meeting uh, at 6 o'clock. And uh, just some things I want to share with you. If you're a member, I encourage you absolutely to be here. All are invited to be here. I'd love for all of you to be here as I share a little bit of my heart. And uh, we have a little bit of business to take care of. And so just come tonight at 6 o'clock and and uh, I'd love to see you back here then. And uh, also, uh, this will be the third night, the third Wednesday night, where uh, Bobby Seymour is teaching through the book of Philippians. As I said, I was able to watch uh, online through uh, Crystal's Facebook and enjoyed that and uh, doing a great job. Uh, And each week, there's more than the last week. That says something, right? Uh, I think you're missing out. If you're not here, you're missing out because it seems like people are getting the hint and coming. So don't miss that this week. Uh, at at 7 o'clock. And there's something for all of the kids. If you bring your kids, we've got Children's Church. Bring your youth. We've got youth event across there, uh, across the the parking lot in the youth center. And uh, it's going to be a a great night. And then next week, we continue the series, uh, the Running with the Giants. I had to remember what it was. Uh, Maybe there's a little bit of uh, of medicine in there still. I got to get that out. Uh, But anyway, I love you guys. God loves you. That's even more important. Stand up and tell somebody God's got this, and we'll see you next time, all right?